In this video, uh, we are going to talk about a method to find the eigenvectors uh, when the eigenvalues are all distinct. So, when all the eigenvalues, when all the eigenvalues, eigenvalues are distinct. So in another video, uh, we talk about what happened when the eigenvalues, there are only two eigenvalues. In that case, uh, you can see that the, uh, you can find the eigenvectors very easily uh, just by looking at the columns. But here we have to do some algebra. We have to multiply certain things to get the uh, eigenvectors. Let's talk about that. So, so the main argument behind this is what we call the uh, Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So there's a theorem in linear algebra called the uh, Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So let's talk about that. Um, Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So what it says that, it says that the uh, matrix, a matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. A matrix, a matrix satisfies a matrix satisfies its own a characteristic equation. Its own characteristic equation. So this is a very powerful result. Uh, that means if you know the characteristic equation that we uh, normally find um, by evaluating the determinant of a certain matrix, uh, but if this says that uh, if you know the characteristic equation, uh, the matrix A should satisfy the equation. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So let's say if uh, lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three, because we talk about a three by three matrix, are uh, the eigenvalues of A are uh, the eigenvalues. Are the eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of A or A uh, then the characteristic equation uh, then the characteristic equation in the characteristic equation equation is so it is simply um, like just basic algebra like you know you um, just when you do with polynomials also if you know the factors you know you can just multiply the factors to get the equation so it's like the same idea so we can see that say a minus lambda 1 i that's the first eigenvalue and then the next eigenvalue a minus lambda 2 i and then a minus lambda 3 i so it says that this equal to zero. That's the uh, from the Cayley-Hamilton theorem we get that. So from the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, uh, which says that it it should satisfy. So that means uh, if you plug in uh, to the characteristic equation, so once you plug in a in there, so you should get zero. That's the that's what the Cayley-Hamilton theorem says. Now let's see how we can use this fact uh, to find the uh, eigenvector so what this simply says that uh, we know that when you multiply two matrices three by three you also get another three by three matrix so this is simply this product is simply a three by three matrix when you multiply these two you again get a three by three matrix so now what we can do you can look at the matrix as columns you know there are three columns so if you just isolate one column so what this says so you can look at this one like this so we can look at this uh, this this new matrix as simply v1 v2 and v3 so what this says that it says that the first matrix times v1 equals zero in other words this says that a minus lambda i so we can write this one as uh, 
simply so we can observe that what this says a minus lambda 1 i times one of these vectors equals zero because that's the only way you can get zero it has to be everything has to be zero. what does it what this means this means v1 is eigenvector so similarly v2 is eigenvector v3 is eigenvector or zero it can be the zero or eigenvector one of them okay so that simply means that if they are non-zero we don't know whether that's the case if they are non-zero this is simply going to be uh, so so this simply says that the non-zero columns non-zero columns non zero columns uh, are eigenvectors are eigenvectors of lambda 1 the other one so that's why so that means if you, if you just multiply two matrix the columns are the eigenvectors of the other one so that's how you remember so if you multiply the first and the second one, first and the third one, that means the columns are the eigenvectors of lambda 2. If you multiply the first and the second one, the columns are the eigenvectors of lambda 3. So that's the simple idea. So let's look at this in a problem. So you can see that's a very simple idea. It's simply coming from the Cayley Hamilton theorem. That's very powerful. And then we just need to multiply two matrices to get the uh, eigenvectors. Normally we had used the, the long uh, six steps process to find them, what we normally call the Gauss Jordan elimination. Um, does take a long time but here it's very simple okay so let's look at that in a problem uh, so let's say this example find find the eigenvectors of find the eigenvectors of find the eigenvectors of let's say a equal negative 4 1 1 1 5 negative 1 0 1 negative 3 let's see those are the symmetric so always if you want to find eigenvectors you have to find the eigenvalues first so let's do that uh, so first uh, find eigenvalues Uh, so to do that what we normally do we look at the characteristic equation which is 0 equal the determinant of a minus lambda i uh, so let's write it so it is uh, negative so what we do we subtract lambda from the diagonal entries so negative 4 uh, minus lambda and then 1 uh, 0 and then 1 5 it's a 5 minus lambda so this is 5 minus lambda uh, 1 and then 1 negative 1 negative 3 minus lambda so the determinant so what we normally do is before we find the determinant we're going to see whether we can simplify this a little bit uh, because if we just want to expand this and there are a lot of writing to avoid that we can think of some other shortcut so for example uh, what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to add the last row to the first row uh, actually we subtract if you subtract them uh, if you subtract them what's going to happen you can see that one get cancelled so you're going to get negative 4 negative lambda 0 that's very important and here you're going to get uh, 4 uh, plus lambda and then uh, 1 5 minus lambda negative minus 1 0 1 minus 3 minus lambda so the reason is now you can take a factor from the first row you can see that lambda plus 4 you can take out as a factor so it gets simple very simple after that see whether we can do more for example if you add uh, the uh, if you add the last column to the first column if you add them so what's going to happen you can see that you get a, a zero in the middle but you get another factor you get two zeros actually so you get two zeros if you do that uh, so then what's going to happen uh, you're going to get uh, zero uh, and then another zero uh, you get four plus lambda 
and then this is going to be 0 and here it's going to be a negative 3 negative lambda this is 5 minus lambda this is 1 and this is negative 1 this is negative 3 negative lambda now the benefit is you have a lot of zeros you can either expand from the first column or the first row because you need only one so I'm going to multiply I'm going to expand from the first row so the sign now plus minus plus so it's a plus sign so that means it's going to be plus uh, the factor is uh, 4 plus lambda it's lambda plus 4 and the determinant of the rest so that means a 0 negative 3 uh, negative lambda and 5 minus lambda 1 you can see this is very simple uh, so the factor is going to be uh, lambda plus 4 and you can see that when you expand because the 0 uh, you only get the other two you only need these two you have to multiply these two with a negative sign a negative sign can change the sign of one of them so that means you simply get a lambda plus 3 which is the sign and then here uh, 5 minus lambda so this all equals zero because that's a characteristic equation. So there are therefore the eigenvalues are therefore the eigenvalues are, are lambda equal negative three, negative four, and five. So those are the eigenvalues. Very simple. Now let's look at the main. So that's all done with the eigenvalues. That's the first step always. The second step, what we can do, uh, we can use the new technique for that. Uh, you cannot find them, find this technique in, in books. Uh, so this is like a, some technique that I developed about a year ago. So let's see how it works. Uh, so we're going to calculate uh, the three uh, eigenmatrices. Uh, eigenmatrix is a new word that I introduced about a year ago. So we can use that terminology here. Okay. So what we can do, um, the first thing is we uh, evaluate the eigenmatrices. Okay. So the next step is find uh, the eigenmatrices. Find the eigenmatrices. There's no word like that. So it's a new word. Uh, we normally use uh, kappa for that. So it's a kappa uh, lambda a. That's what the notation that we use. So we call them kappa. Lambda is the eigenvalue. A is the matrix. Okay. So that's the notation we use for eigenmatrices. So let's try to uh, do that. Because we know by the theory, when you multiply those three eigenmatrices, they are all zero. Uh, so we know that uh, from the Cayley-Hamilton theorem by the Cayley Hamilton theorem. We know that the kappa matrices are of lambda 1 with A times kappa matrix of lambda 2A times kappa matrix of lambda 3A. If you multiply this product, it is 0. So that's we know. Uh, so we can use that fact so let's try to uh, write the kappa matrices and then if you uh, our argument is if you look at just two of them uh, the columns are eigenvectors so that's the idea column of these are eigenvectors columns are eigenvectors of lambda 1 the other one it's always the opposite one they were left with. So let's do that. So let's try the kappa matrices. Uh, so what are the kappa matrices? Uh, for the first one, we're going to go with uh, A plus lambda equal 3. So that means positive 3 i. So that's the first kappa matrix. So which is uh, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 8, 1, 1, negative 1, 0 that's the first kappa matrix do the same thing a is a negative 4 that means positive 4, 4 i so you just add the that value to the di diagonal entry so 0 1 0 1 9 
1 1 negative 1 1 that's the second one the third one is, is lambda equal 5 so it's a negative 5 you subtract the eigenvalue from the diagonal entry so it is uh, negative 9 1 0 1 1 1 1 negative 1 negative 8 sorry get so now uh, the things are very easy uh, for the uh, eigenvalue uh, for eigenvector eigenvector of uh, lambda equal let's say let's start with the first one negative 3 what are you going to do the idea is to multiply the other two matrix but the thing is that you don't want to multiply the whole matrix what we normally do uh, we're going to pick the matrix with most number of zeros or we're going to pick the vector with most number of zeros we're going to pick one of them we don't need the whole the all the columns we just need to pick pick one column we normally pick the one with most number of zeros to make the calculation easier. So what I'm going to do for lambda equal negative 3, we pick the other two. We normally multiply the uh, vector with most number of zeros. So that means to find the eigenvector for lambda equal negative 3, I'm going to multiply the a minus 5i with a minus 5i. That's the last one. I'm going to multiply a minus 5i with the vector which has most number of zeros from the other matrix so that means I'm going to pick this one because this has a lot of zeros so let's uh, multiply by that so which is 0 1 0 so if you multiply what do you get uh, so you can see that there are two zero that means we only pick the middle entry of the a minus 5i that means your answer is simply the middle entry 1 1 1 so you're going to get 1 1 1 just the middle column so that's the first eigenvector. So this is the eigenvector for eigenvector for lambda equal negative three. That's the eigenvector for lambda equal negative three. Do the same thing. So for uh, lambda equal negative four, now lambda equal negative four. So I'm going to do with the same thing. I'm going to go with the uh, same matrix A minus five i. You can even pick the other matrix. It doesn't matter. Just pick the other two pick something with a lot of zeros so let's go with uh, uh, which column so we have to multiply uh, with a column of a plus 3i so what I can do is uh, you can pick anything uh, I'm gonna go with this one so let's say we're gonna either first or the second one it doesn't really matter so let's say I pick the first one so it's negative 1 1 0 because there's no one with two zeros uh, no column so if you multiply what do you get uh, you're going to get uh, so negative 1 with negative 9, 9 and then 1 with 1 so it's, you get 10 and then uh, if you multiply with the second row you get 0 if you multiply with the last row you're going to get uh, a negative 1 times 0 and then 1 times 1 is a 1 and then 0 times 0 so that's what you get so that's the eigenvector for uh, this eigenvector for lambda equal negative 4 and do the same thing for the uh, lambda equal negative 5 matrix uh, we to multiply the first two so if you multiply the first two uh, what we can do is uh, just a plus 3i with a lot of zeros that means I'm going to go with 0 1 0 as the first case uh, when you multiply by that you get 1 8 1 this is just one answer there are a lot of answers because if you pick you had a lot of other choices also you can have different columns what if when you multiply you get a you get a zero so if you get a zero what do you want to do pick some other column because sometimes you get zero okay so that's it so that's the idea uh, so that's the eigenvector for uh, lambda equal 5 very simple.